Okay, back with another tutorial. It's been a minute. Today I thought I'd go over a bit of UI code, partially for those who might find it useful, partially for myself who just loathes UI code to the very core of his being. So I've got a controller here. Uh, I, don't want to, I can navigate this menu and what I'm going to be covering today is the basics of navigation just like this but also if we go into the audio menu and we go right that's music right here you can see I have this um, this box of music tracks and I can like turn on and off various music tracks and I can actually play different ones let's see how that changes up here as well so that's what we'll be covering. I'm not going to go into too much detail if you're looking to make something that's exactly like this. This is a bit more advanced, but generally just this thing. And maybe uh, the mechanic of it snapping with the controller, because I have to do that. Before anyone says... I need to rearrange that, it's overlapping. Before anyone says that I could have just done this with a... Um, is it a layout group? Um, let me look at it quickly. There is an object called a layout group. I'm probably not a layout group. What's it called? Do I have it on one of these? There it is. Yeah, vertical layout group. That basically, whatever you put in here will just be scaled uh, vertically. You can get horizontal ones, you get grid ones. And that doesn't really work for this. So the, mu the music player doesn't really work in the same way because it doesn't scale correctly when you try and shrink it and grow it. So I had to do it manually and like fix in a height. So I'll, I'll cover that, I'll cover what, what, I, what I did there in case you're not a fan of using the vertical layout group. And it's all done via code and it's all populated via code so you know it's quite versatile. And I'll try and keep the video not too long and put the code on the website as usual. Uh, this is the setup I've got so these are all the buttons so you don't need to worry about those. Track name. The only thing we're looking at, this is the background, the only thing we're looking at is this, the track list. So this is a um, scroll rect and uh, that's the graphic that's in there. So it's just anything out of that is hidden because it's masked, the scroll rect. I'm going to assume you know how scroll recs work. That's what we're starting from. And then the content box itself. So let's get into it. Uh, is there a way to discard changes? I'm not too sure. I think it saves automatically. But yeah, we'll get into it. So here's where we're starting, the music player. This is actually quite a cool system. It's all made by an addressable system, so it clears it up from memory when it's not being used. So, But we'll ignore what we're not doing right now. So set up music tracks is what we're worried about. It goes straight into it after on enable. And we'll start here. So it gets the scroll rect and the content windows that I showed before. And this is just a list of tracks that we're using to populate the data in the um, each item. It's not too important, it's just like an audio clip and name, artists and stuff. So you can largely ignore that. And for each track, um, so for int track number zero, for the number of tracks, we'll create a track. And let me actually show you what that looks like as well. So if I go uh, track, you can see the prefab for the track that we're adding and it just looks like this so you have the background, you have the name, the artist whether it's on or off and then two buttons so the button that's actually the track itself like you saw I could click it and it would play the track and a button to turn it off and on again which is the solution to every tech problem so that's what we're gonna do there setting music tracks dot add so this is just a list of those tracks and it, so it creates one and it adds it and then we get into the position tracks, which is quite... It, it, it was long doing it, but here we go. And I probably should have simplified it for this tutorial, but whatever. So we'd say how many tracks can fit in the box, the total like box size by default. Um, let me play that. So I've got it set to 4.5, you can see there. So if we go to settings, audio, you'll see four and a half boxes actually fit in here. One, two, three, four, and a half. We'll say uh, track content anchor min equals new vector to zero. So the minimum anchor and the maximum anchor, uh, I believe minimum is bottom left. 
yeah, bottom left corner and top right corner of the object. So if we go to scene and we go, I think it's, no, it's on the canvas, it's in this canvas here. Core mechanics, settings, settings, clone, uh, menus, audio, way down here. Track list, you see all these tracks here. So that, that would be the minimum anchor, lower left, you see the little arrow there, and that's the top right anchor, the max anchor. So the content window, uh, this basically scales the content window itself, essentially. And it turns into how many tracks fit in the box times the number of music tracks. And I think that's self-explanatory. So basically, this, this just scales the content box, this content box, to fit as many tracks as needed. So it scales it like the length of the thing between zero and one, scales it from there and the height is one minus how many, however many tracks fit in the box. Yep, not too complicated. One over how many tracks fit in the box times the number of fitting the box. Yeah, I, th I think that makes sense. And then this, you'll see this later as well, track uh, offset min, offset max equals zero. That basically makes it so the box itself, you see these blue corners snap to the anchors, these uh, white triangle corners, because they're not always the same. So that just snaps it there. And then for each music track inside the box, uh, track height percent equals one over the number so that's how much of the percentage because remember that now you're inside this box this is zero if I set if I set one corner to zero zero it would end up here if I set the other max corner to one one it'll end up there so we need we need to get a percentage I hope I'm not rushing so one over the count basically gives you a percentage of the height so that's how that's the percentage that each one will need to take if that makes sense so like like the lowest one will go there second one will go there until they're all filling it up uh, this gets the rec transform of the individual track we're talking about because this is cycling through this which is a, um, a list of something that's not a rec transform so you need to get the rec transform on it and then this just positions the uh, anchors so anchor min is that times the percent plus one that is it uh, so so zero is the left side and then one minus the track height percent it uh, it kind of it makes sense, right? I don't have to explain this thing, right? It, it you sort of get what it's doing. So it's just positioning each one based on I, based on the index, to go down each time or up. I forget how I've done it. And then uh, the set this is this is interesting. So it sets the offset, but instead of setting it to zero zero, it sets it a little bit off. So you can see that there's a there's like a slight gap between each one, which is I I think it just looks a little nicer. So that's what that is. That's why it's not saying it to zero zero. So that's pretty much it for setting up the tracks. That's uh, it's honestly not that not that complicated. The navigation was a bit was just was quite uh, easy as well. This, this took a little bit of figuring out, like mainly seeing like which end I did it from. It's like going into this. Uh, let me try and go to go into this properly. So zero is the bottom left. So this is the x coordinate. So this is all the way on the left. That's why it starts by saying, okay, this is where one anchor is going to be on this side. The bottom left anchor is going to be on this side. And the Y coordinate of the bottom left anchor is going to be, um, oh, I lost it. Yep. So the Y coordinate of the bottom left anchor is going to be one. So right at the top minus the track height percent times, uh, I plus one. Cause obviously if it was I zero, then it would just, it would, the first track would be up here. It's I plus one. So th the first track is here. And the second track is there because I increases and it goes lower and lower and lower until it's right to the bottom and that's the last track and then this is the same except obviously the top right corner is on the right side so the x value is one so it's all the way to the right and the height is the same but instead of adding one to make it down here we just times it by i so the first one will be zero one minus zero is right at the top I think I explained that clearly. So that's how you get each box. UI code is kind of finicky, but it's not too bad. I still hate anything working with anything in the UI, but you know, it is what it is. I also hope this isn't too small because I'm working on a 4K monitor. Maybe I'll zoom in one. That looks weird. 
get better eyes. Anyway, <laughs> um, we're off to navigation now. So we get a navigation um, component. If you don't know how navigation works, every selectable object, so this track has two buttons and as I said, the button, this is my own button, but it's based off just the button script. I can even actually click that if I go a uh, uh, button extended. So you'll see the button extended inherits from selectable and selectable basically has a navigation aspect to it. So you can see all these crazy arrows going up, down, left and right. And if you set these, you'll see where it goes. So if I go up, it'll click to that button. If I go down, it'll select that button, etc, etc. I'll have it looping around, I believe. So that's how that works. And you just uh, populate it as so. Settings, music track, music, music player. This is how the music tracks used, by the way, up here after position tracks. It just says g.constructor and tracks takes in the track and then it just sets the uh, sets the text. So you don't actually need to know that. That'll be um, personal to your thing, so you can ignore that. So down here you get the navigation um, and you get the you get this uh, this is what I'm getting first. So N is the button left of track list, which is this. So I basically want any time you press left from here, I want it to go there for every object. So I just get that and hold it essentially. I don't know why I save this as a selectable instead of navigation. Actually, I think sorry, no, no, never mind. You can't have a navigation. It's like yeah, it's a component of that. You have to take the navigation of it. So then you have to say okay, this is what it equals. <clears throat> n.select on right equals uh, music track source zero. So if you're right from this button, um, it will go to the first, the first thing. Uh, where are we at? It will go to the first track. And again, this all works in selectables. So this uh, play track selectable, selectable button on the right. And I just have that here at the top. This is the selectable for the main button and the toggle active button, which is this button. So it has two selectables saved there. You could, um, instead of saving it with transform.find into a variable, you could use an accessor. So just get this. But uh, as I said, it's all, all this memory is released anyway. So it doesn't really make a massive difference to me. Obviously you generally want to use as little memory as possible. Button to left of, uh, Button left of track list dot navigation equals n. Why have I done this? This is weird. Navigation n equals button left of track list navigation. Button left track list. Why have I done that? Maybe that maybe that saves it. I do not remember why I did this. This is very weird. I think. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I think you can't set this directly. Am I right? dot select on right equals uh, that does that work yeah so you, you can't you can't modify um, the navigation because it's not a variable you have to take the navigation off it save it, edit it, and then set it. So that's how that works. I think it's a lot like changing transforms. You can't change like transform.position.x. You have to just get the position, change it, and then reapply it. Uh, so that's a that's a little lesson on um, reference versus um, address. I think like, no, sorry, reference versus value or whatever. Okay, <laughs> for for each track in the um, the list of tracks we've got, then we're just setting the navigation. So um, this gets the uh, new object. Obviously, just to save memory, I'm just reusing navigation n. I could just say something new here, navigation s equals this, but I'm just using n here. So setting music tracks dot play track selectable not navigation. So that's the, again, the main button, this button for each track in turn. And then we say the left is the button left of track list, which is that. So if you go left, it'll go to there. And then we say um, on up, it's the one above it. And if it's below, it's the play track selectable below it. And if it's right, it's 
is I, I already have right and left set by default actually if you look into this um, I believe so yeah so right will take you there and left from here will take you there which is the main button so I already have left and right set up so I just need to reapply that which is already saved here so I don't need to edit it so I'm setting this from this and then set music tracks so uh, play track selectable not navigation equals n again that's reselecting it or sorry re resetting it from the changed values and then we do the same thing but on the other side so it goes up one down one and then let and then sets the uh i think it sets the right as well up down no it doesn't so it, this just so for this only the up and down are set and then if it goes left it goes back to here and if it goes right i just don't think i think right just doesn't do anything um, I can go into loop int by the way this is just to get the uh, so if I if I add if I add an in if I add one it just modulates it let me let, let, let me let me go into it so if it's less than zero um, let's just an error I should never do that so it extends an integer and this is the count so it holds it within that so if it's while it's less than zero i plus equals count and then return the count the modulus of the count basically it's quite clean code i quite like that so it'll essentially it does what it says it just loots wraps an int within a collection so if i have five plus three five count three uh five count seven sorry uh, no, that's sorry, that's how it works. It's plus one. So if I have like se seven count six, it'll be like oh se seven's over six, so it will um, modulate it and give you back one because it's one over six, right? So it'll, it'll just essentially just keep counting. So I can just keep counting a number, and if the count is seven, it'll go zero one two three four five six seven, zero one two three four five six seven, and just loop round and round and round. So that saves us from having any index out of range exceptions so i can just say i minus one and then loop that integer to the how many tracks there are or plus one and then make sure that's looped within how many tracks there are and then get the active selectable toggle active selectable which is that so if i go up from here it goes to the track that's above this or loops it around etc and that's how i've managed to loop it in the scene that's why it goes from zero all the way to the last one and the last one all the way up to zero pretty proud of this code even if i'm doing a terrible job uh, explaining it <laughs> um and then we go set ui which i think is the only thing you don't have to worry about uh yeah this is this is this is other stuff this is just uh like just making it so it selects when you when you hit it so you'll see if i go over it and select it in the game it like lights up or if I click it the whole thing lights up see that yeah it has it has a weird thing with like the button staying on so if I click it it'll, it'll have the last one selected but it's fine so yeah that's uh that's the whole thing how have I done this part with it going up and down with that that was that's probably quite useful having that loop oh great song anyway um <laughs> this is how i've done that so oh can i get into this actually this might be a, a long long thing because this is like focus track yeah i don't think i can get into this i basically oh, should i do it what, what's the time saying 20 minutes now i'm not getting into this <laughs> this is this whole whole its own thing basically so ba I have a, um, a custom button script as I said which I've mainly just used for my menu settings and what it is is instead of just having an on click event that most buttons have like you know you can add uh, add on, oh, this button on click you'll notice that my buttons have a whole different thing so you can say on down on up on submit which is like the on click or it has on select which is every any time I go over it with my um, Anytime I select it with like this thing, so that's that that's selecting it. Even if I'm not clicking it, it's, it's selecting it. So I can do stuff like that, and from there I can go track focus track, and the focus track. It's the focus track itself isn't that complicated. 
Um, maybe I maybe I publish this, but an extended script. It's not it's not too deep anyway. You just get a uh, it's just a copy of the button script by getting all these. Stop. Got to go take my food out. And then um, it just makes an event and yeah, I'll, 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 if if someone wants it, I can make a tutorial on events. I'm rambling though. This has gone on way too long. The focus track basically calls the parent the um, music player's focus track feature with the track number and this says focus track list with the track num if it's not contained within the track list box which is another can uh, another thing from my own library this this checks if one rect contains another rect so it says is the bottom left corner within the bounds and is the bottom right corner within the bounds if it's not then it doesn't contain doesn't totally contain this rect and we obviously want to snap to it in that uh, case so if it doesn't contain the rect then focus on it it's kind of a, it's a bit spaghetti going from the track list back and forth but i couldn't think of a better way to do it uh track content ac anchored position so this changes the anchored position itself and I, I believe I, I jacked this code from somewhere else. I really should have credited it. I do apologise. It was on the Unity Answers page. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't remember where I got it from because I definitely don't remember writing this myself. Um, I can't do even know how this works. Track, scroll, transform, inverse, transform, point. Like I have no idea what that means. But essentially, uh, you see what it does. It had this. Uh, I know it had it two ways. So it had X and Y, but I just needed it for the Y position, so I got rid of X. So this just moves the uh, box's position to be right on that point, so it snaps to it nicely. So yeah, I lied about covering this in great detail, but you know, hopefully the rest of the tutorial was good. It's been a while since I put it out a tutorial. That's my excuse for these a this absolute shambles. 22 minutes. It should not have taken 22 minutes to cover that tiny box of code. I didn't even rewrite anything. Anyway, in the interest of it not going even longer, uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> And if you do have any uh, requests about my other code, there are some things I think people might find interesting, like the sound player that can play sounds from anywhere. So it uses a singleton, you just literally say uh, sound player dot play sound, play, sound player dot play, and then you just call, put an audio clip in and you can play it. And it stays, it has, has different sound types. So you can say play, uh, attack, one and then comma effect and it'll play it at that volume and then that's how I've set this up as well so you can see I have different sliders for effect dialogue uh, music general etc so that's pretty cool code I think um, I can get to some other more complex stuff like the button extended which I mean it looks simple but I'll have to I'll, be, I'll basically be explaining delegates and um, I, can, I can go into delegates and lambda expressions and events and that kind of thing, which is very good knowledge to have. That's slightly intermediate coding knowledge, but something that will definitely up your code game if you don't know about it yet. I can always go into my data managers, of which I have several, get into serialization and deserialization, uh, stuff like that, like loading files and unloading files, and which is, in my opinion, a lot more useful in just learning how to use um i believe that are they prefs data prefs or whatever they have from unity and i even made my own one get and set pref but obviously it's better to do it yourself because now you can make it more versatile i can have like a default value for when i set a pref instead of having to say oh find key is this key, does this key exist if it does then set it if it doesn't then do this i've just made it all here with a default value there get pref but yeah, thanks for, as I said, thanks for watching. I spent another five minutes rambling and uh, it's literally gotten darker. That's how long I've been spent on this goddamn tutorial. Thanks for watching and have a great day. And if I forget to um, advertise my own product, do check out Above the Stars on Steam and Android. Now free on Android, not on Steam. Get on Steam. Android pays me fuck all. Anyway, thanks for watching for the eighth time. And have a great day.